another appreciation for the largest crowd ever to witness a high state football game. Very humbling to be a part of that team that uh, got to perform in front of that group. Uh, very well done uh, performance by the offense. Very pleased with uh, the way they came out, came out fast, uh, and really played sustained a high intensity and good tempo. You know, I know Tom's worked very hard. We all worked very hard on tempo, and you really, really felt that throughout the course of the game. JT uh, continues to be a very good distributor, uh, completing a high percentage of his balls, and and really we're giving him more and more responsibility about getting us in the right play, which is what uh, a big part of what the off uh, quarterback's expected to do. Uh, the champion efforts on offense were Devin Smith and Evan Spencer and Mike Thomas. Uh, that's uh, the credit. You know, Zach Smith's done a very good job. Those those three are playing a fairly high level of football for us. Um, you have two other guys that were very close, and that was uh, uh, I think I got them down here. Actually, JC, uh, Corey Smith was close too, but Dontre and and Jalen had a couple of mishaps, or they would have been champs too. Running backs, you had Rod Smith, uh, great of the champion, playing very hard, had 11 carries, so nice dis distribution. He's battling for the number two spot. So it's between him and Curtis right now. And uh, Briante had an excellent game as well at uh, on kickoffs. Uh, quarterback JT Barrett was a champion. Tight ends, both tight ends, great a champion. We were in 12 grouping a lot. Uh, I want to say 40 or 30 some plays. And you can expect more of that uh, now that Jeff's full speed. Player of the game was the entire offensive line. Uh, Taylor Decker, Pat Elfline, Jacoby, Billy Price, and Daryl Baldwin, 90, uh, they all played over 90 plays. I want to say there's 111 graded plays, 300, 380 yards rushing. And then the other player of the game was Ezekiel Elliott, who had um, 112 of his yards were after contact. And that's what I really, you know, I went back and watched it again this morning quickly. And his uh, pad level and um, uh, yards after contact were, he turned a lot of fours and fives and eight and nines in the rushing. Also had 51 yards, so he had 233 all-purpose yards. Um, on defense, uh, the champion efforts were Joey Bosa, Mike Bennett, Josh Perry, Armani Reeves, and the player of the game was Joey Bosa. So uh, the obvious concern is pass game. Well, we had four plays that really, really, you know, I hear someone say, well, just take away those four plays. You can't just take away those four plays. That's part of the game. The first one was the uh, Von Bell was in position. Uh, needs actually didn't play it poorly, came up through the guy's hand. The guy made a great play. The second one was a screen pass that was well executed by Cincinnati and not uh, defended very well by us. The third one was the one right before the half. And, uh, and I don't think, uh, you know, I, I fault our coaching and also uh, uh, the, you know, obviously Eli got turned around a little bit and got beat deep. So um, that's a situation that we visited as a coaching staff. And then the last one was the bubble and go. And uh, that was another well-executed play by Cincinnati, uh, poorly defended by us. So we've addressed it. We worked actually went out yesterday and worked on corrections. Um, and I think we're, I, I know we're going to get a lot better. You know, I, I've not uh, at all given up on our system of play. Uh, we're going to continue to develop players and make sure that there's, uh, we're in the right defense at the right time. And uh, kicking game was uh, one of our strengths Saturday. Uh, our kickoff team is, I think we're number one in the Big Ten, and uh, I love those guys. Those are those are my guys, and those are uh, I, we gave them a standing ovation yesterday as a team. Showed a lot of the highlights as a team. We have something called Thursday races, and we have a new Thursday race award, and we gave it out yesterday, and that went to Briante Dunn. And so it's never too late for a young man to make an impression on a coach and a coaching staff. So if you keep pushing, get ready for 25 to get in the mix as well. It's the only way, in my opinion, it's the only way to run an you know, run a program like that, like this, is to reward achievement, and it's not just who can jump high and run fast or catch a ball. It's who's a, a team-oriented player, and every one of them. Uh, you won't see a player play unless he has some, unless there's some uh, other reason, unless he's really a, a critical member of the special forces or special teams. And a good example is Ezekiel Elliott. He's our starting tailback. He starts on kickoff and uh, punt. And the same with Carlos Hyde, Shazir, all those players at some point will get their start in that position. So real big challenge with special teams this week. The best returners, uh, kickoff returner number four. And then the best, uh, excuse me, best punt returner is number four. He's the best in the Big Ten. And then the 
Diggs is the best kickoff returner. Very, very talented group. And this will be our, I've already spent an inordinate amount of time for a Sunday and Monday on our coverage units for this week because that will be a big difference in this game. And I'll answer your questions. Front row left, Rusty. Uh, Urban, what do you think you might anticipate with playing a team that's hosting its first Big Ten game? Really I, don't think, I, don't think, I know it's where we're going to walk into. You know, I, I went to, you know, I had a big write up. I've never been to the stadium. Um, so I just, I wanted, it's turf, it's going to be a noon game, but I can imagine, you know, you know, I've been at, you know, places where, you know, yeah, but this will be an atmosphere. They've been working on this one, I imagine, for a while. This will be a big, big time atmosphere. Completely unrelated question, too. During a game, you, you and your staff, you're worried about the next play, you're worried about how things are going. I assume that the players are meeting in units. If a kid takes a lick out in the field and doesn't respond necessarily, takes a lick. he gets really hit hard. And I mean, you're trying to put the next play in motion or whatever, the kid comes out. Is there somebody whose responsibility it is to keep an eye on guys just to see that they might be in trouble, that they might not be full, fully in charge of their faculties, in addition to anything that you guys might notice? Like if they're hurt? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, our strength coach is right, right there. And he always tells me immediately if uh, someone's hurt. I'm not sure the question. No, no, that's, and sometimes they hide it well. Kids don't want anybody to see that they're hurt, but I mean, I'm sorry. No, we have people, you know, we have an excellent training staff, Doug and them. That's that's their job. They do nothing else other than to, and they, Mickey, I'm constantly, I, I don't know if you see it, every series I have a conversation with my strength coach, and he's, you know, he's, he's he controls the sideline, and uh, that's how we do it. Front row, Bill. Urban, you kind of touched on this a little bit in your opening comment, but you said on Saturday night you were going to have hard conversations about the breakdowns on, on pass defense. Could you describe the conversations and just how how you feel about where that aspect of the game is? Yeah, we gave up 360 yards uh, receiving. Uh, four plays equated well over 250. And uh, so I wanted, you know, it's my job to find out why. And uh, after our explanation conversation, I know the why now. Uh, I had a couple, di you know, things that I would have, expect differently. Uh, the one before the half, I expect a different, you know, we left the middle of the field open and that's, you know, everybody, uh, that's something I need to get involved in too and say, that's give my two cents. And I'm normally, you know, I grade myself down on that. I don't call defenses, but I, I'm a game manager. That's what I, my job is. And, and I should have had more input in that. You know, if I want to say there's 40 seconds left or something like that in, in that situation. The other situations, we just got to play and coach better. And I, I am, once again, I. it happened here in, oh, well, not oh, it was 2000, our first year here, was that 12? When I we had a bad day, real bad day on defense against Indiana. And uh, we we had a team meeting in here and it was nasty. It was not, it was all about playing hard. And I didn't, I went through the, I graded the defense myself. I went in there and met with them. Uh, our guys played very hard. Uh, played a very good throwing offense that uh, we had four really bad plays that we have to get corrected, have to get corrected. And I'm satisfied with the direction we're going. We just got to get corrected. Now, do you feel that this is close enough to becoming, or at least as potential, be that championship defense that you're looking for? Uh, I guess I'm going to give you the positive answer. Absolutely. Yeah, I like who we've recruited. I like who I've hired. And we're going to grind and work and get better. Front row, middle, Todd. Urban, is the offense look, I think you guys had like 100 and 101 plays the other night, 700 and some yards, pretty balanced attack. Is that beyond where you thought it would be at this point with a new quarterback and new line and new running backs? I was really excited to get our skill going, and we, we didn't do a good job early in the year. You know, Navy, we're a little conservative because of a really new quarterback. Uh, Virginia Tech, I wish we had that one over again. Um, and then you had, uh, who we have Kent, and then the last two. I was really, ex I, I am really even more excited now about our offensive skill. You know, I just, it's, it is a street fight to get the ball right now. You know, and when you roll three, the thing I, I really appreciate watching is when you can start platooning guys as they're going in. I don't know if you notice that during the course of the game, but I mean, you're running new tailbacks, you know, you're running new, and they're, you know, who's better, our first or our third? You know, they're pretty good. And same thing with the two, we have two sets of receivers that can go in. Now we have two tight ends with a, very capable third. So we're recruiting some depth. And that's what, when you start talking tempo, you wear out the defense. Unfortunately, we're out the offense too. 
if you don't have that depth. And now Warner's, Coach Warner's even got a little depth in the offensive line. He's starting to platoon a little bit. So that's a good sign. And that's when you can start getting that many plays and not worry about it. But there's been times in the past when you want to run, you know, run uh, very up-tempo, and you, it looks awful because everyone's blown out. We don't, I don't feel that now way, that way at all. And more importantly, our offense coordinator, because he's a big tempo guy, I'm, I sometimes put the brakes on him because I'm the one on the field and see the fatigue. As long as I know that we're rotating players like we have been um, on the headsets, it's go, go, go. So. Have you had an offense like this before? I mean, we never did in the uh, – we had great offenses. Uh, I mean, like great offenses. I consider this potentially a really good one. Uh, maybe a great one, but uh, this this is the first time I feel very comfortable with the tempo, because that's not something in the Florida, Utah, and, and Bowling Green we never ran tempo offenses. Tom, that's why a big part of why he was hired. I wanted to do it, and he's an expert at it. <clears throat> is JT further along than you expected he would be at this point? Really great question. Uh, no, no, I, I uh, had a lot of confidence in JT. Uh, I love JT. He's fun to coach. He's a guy that uh, has a great demeanor on the sideline. He's a student of the game. He's got a great relationship with his coordinator and position coach. Uh, he's a product of those around him. I mean, there's some guys making really terrific plays out there for him too. So I, I think as a group, this is a this is a good group to be around right now. That's a good problem to have. But if JT keeps playing well, have you thought much about the situation next year? If Braxton comes back healthy, JT played well this year, you're going to have a tough decision to make. Not until you just said that. But, <laughs> but Braxton's our core. I mean, to, to be fair to Braxton's a Big Ten Player of the Year, and, and uh, but it's good to know that we got both of them. And, and Cardell Jones is is growing up. Uh, he, he, you know, I admire him. He's, you know, I, that's I haven't had the third uncle phone calls about. Not that I would take them, but. Uh, but the Cardell's, I like his uh, professional approach right now. Front row right, Austin. Urban, uh, obviously Ohio State fans like to measure themselves against Michigan. As coaches, you all recruit against them constantly. When you get into a season, how much attention can you pay to what's, <coughs> what's going on with your rival? Uh, you, you follow the Big Ten. You know, I don't personally. You know, Jerry or someone will, you know, I, I, I don't spend much time at all. I'm always checking the scores on the way home. and. We have a little uh, routine in our car as we go home. Someone reads the scores to me as I'm driving, and and I just hear the scores and, and then see how my friends are doing first. I always check my friends and see how they did, the uh, guys I've worked with, and then we check the Big Ten. And, uh, you know, I haven't followed uh, our rivals very much, uh, but I follow our conference. Does it, if you haven't been watching closely, does it surprise you to have heard those scores and to know that they're two and three? I mean, this is I haven't studied them. You know, I, I watched a little bit of the Utah because obviously I know the coaches at Utah very well, and, and uh, you know, I just I know what the players they have, and they're they're regardless whatever is going on, what's going to happen. Game 12 is going to be the best effort that they'll put out, and that's that's when we really get concerned about them. All right, Don. Coach um, Anthony Schlegel's kind of blown up on social media. Um, <laughs> Did you see it? Have you seen it yet? Literally, at the end of the day, you can't have a guy running out on the field. Yeah, I mean, I, in all serious, seriousness, I grabbed Anthony last night. I'm sure Gene Smith will probably, you know, I appreciate him protecting our players, and I would rather him not have a lawsuit if something bad would happen. You drill a guy like that. So we had a, a partial serious conversation, and then we also gave him a Hit City Award and our team, and, and we had a little fun with that too. And I, uh, I never saw it. But I have all my internet people do it for us in the Hit City. They showed all the uh, the internet stuff about him, like Iwo Jima and all the things. So we had, we had a lot of fun in here with that. They love Schlegel, as, as we all do. I do. He's an incredible person. Clay. Coach, what was your reaction? Did you have one when Maryland was named two years ago? And better yet, what, what did they bring to the table for, for the big team? I, was, I, I almost... I really looked at going to Maryland when I was an assistant coach. Uh, God, God, what was the coach's name? It was from Colorado. Um, no, no, no. The coach that went, Ron Vanderlyn was the head coach. And uh, this is a long, long time ago. When you were real young, Clay. Yeah, I was very young. And uh, I just did a little homework at Maryland back then. I know it's in one of the most fertile areas in America recruiting. I think they're a great addition to the Big Ten. We got a lot of respect for them. I remember watching the Maryland teams over the past. Been very good. And, and I think this group's pretty good. You recruit hundreds of 
players. How quickly do you move on from a kid like Diggs, who you wanted, when you get... When you, you move on real quick. Player? But I, 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 we had a good relationship with Stafa, to Stefan Diggs and his family, and I really thought we had a legitimate shot at him. And I knew when uh, watching him play that he was special. And now that I see him, he, he's as good as there is in America. Uh, far left, Lori. Coach, you talked about wanting to get the pass defense short up. How much do you need it short up for this particular game? Because they've got some great receivers in Diggs, Sleek, and Long. Yeah, they're. Uh, uh, I mean, the, the, everything you just said is the conversation we've, we're having, and I can, I can, everyone rest assured that there's no more effort. There's, it's not like you got to work a little harder. We got to get it fixed, and it's a combination of coaching and playing. And so we got to get fixed. And it started yesterday. We went out. Uh, we didn't spend a lot of time on last week's game, correct the mistakes. I want to get out in the field and actually work on the issues that we had, and we did. And we're going to do it again. Uh, we're not allowed to practice today, but the kids will get their iPads filled with stuff today, and then obviously Tuesday, and Wednesday practice. But you're right, this is a big one. There's another group of talented receivers. You had conceded that an aggressive defense will give up big plays. So are the big plays just happening too often, or yeah. is it that they're great, not great coming point. with? Yeah, when, when you want to challenge every throw and play press coverage, the, the vulnerability is not the hitch. You know, that's, you take those away, and I still want to do that. You know, we're not going to give in just because we got, uh, we got in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. We lost. That's going to happen. Uh, however, it's happening too frequently right now. Yeah, uh, Herbert, you, you spoke about Joey Bosa a while ago being the defensive player of the week. Uh, what just stands out about him as you watch him? Do you, I don't know, how would you explain his get up and go to somebody? Uh, it's very easy. He, he's an uh, uh, energizer, energizer, man. He just goes, he practices that way he, from day one. You know, it's a product of, you know, you know his family. His dad's got an incredible football background. His uncle played here, Eric Kumro. Um I thought we would have a guy that would be pretty much game ready because he went to a really quality high school program, uh, but I didn't imagine it'd be this ready. He's extremely strong, quick, and is relentless. And on top of that, he loves the game and understands the game. Does he remind you of anybody from the past who, who can affect games defensively like he? You know, I think John Simon. You know, he's, he's a little more talented than John. He's a little longer and and. Uh, uh, but John Simon had that same, you know, you watch those two play and practice and compete and their mindset, you know, those, those are two good people to be, you know, you, to, have, to be in company. Everybody knows how we feel, all feel about John Simon, but to even mention someone in that same name who's, you know, a few inches taller and a little longer, I mean, that's pretty rare air, those two guys. And final question, Doug? Urban with, it looked like JT in the game, I don't know, maybe had a couple times where he, Change the play or got you guys mm -hmm. out of a look. What do, you, what do you need to see in a quarterback to give him the freedom to do something? Like that? Uh, the command. The, the, neg the negative is we also had a couple false starts. And you can say the center, the, the tackle, the guard, or whoever it was, it's the quarterback. And so that was the, uh, you know, we had some conversations on the sideline that weren't pleasant that that's all him. And he's got to take charge. Uh, very extremely intelligent guy. He understands we want to run a play. There's certain looks don't run that play against us. So he did a very good job. Second half, he got us in a bunch of them. I, I, I want to say a dozen. He changed the plays. And uh, we went to the bear, and we had a bear beater. Immediately got us in it. We hit a, two big plays on him, and they got out of it. And that's what the quarterback has to do. So JT's proved he's had the cognitive ability to do it. Now he's got to continue to have that leadership. And now we're going on the road. You know, he's got to be more, you know, just bring more presence behind his voice. You, I mean, you guys have talked about his leadership from the minute he got here. Just right. that progress of taking charge on the field, on the sideline, or with guys. Like, where is he still a young guy in that? No, no. He, he just, it's the, the, you know, he doesn't exactly rattle the walls when he speaks. You know, so we're going to work on voice lessons with him and make sure he gets a little deeper voice. But he, he's done a very good job with that. Thanks, guys.